Hi, I'm Sam, the senior display tester at Ratings.com. Hey, I'm Pascal. I'm the uh, display R&D engineer here at Ratings.com. And we recently launched our latest attachment shop date for TVs, TV 2.0. And of course, that comes with a lot of questions from all of you. We even had a dedicated channel on our Discord for you to put your questions for us to answer here. So today we're looking to address those questions directly and hopefully clear some things up. This user asked us about the difference between our scoring for ambient black level arrays and direct reflections and how those two fit into our bright room usage rating. Pascal, you developed these tests. Uh, what do you have to say about them? I think it's a great question, and uh, that user actually reached out on our uh, Discord channel, which you should totally check out. Uh, I did reply, uh, but to give some context, I think the question's very good because um, you know, reflections is a comprehensive topic. There's a lot of stuff going into it. There's, you know, direct reflections, there's indirect reflections, of which there are subcomponents. What we found out during development was that um, a lot of TVs that are really, really bad at direct reflections, I'm notably thinking about the Sony Bravia 3, or um, you know, a lower-end model such as the LG uh, UT7590, they're so bad at handling direct reflections that no matter how you put them, uh, even if you control your light a little bit, they'll be reflecting any surface that's in front of it. So if you have a white wall in front of your TV, uh, you'll be seeing that even with little ambient light. So what we found was that, generally speaking, direct reflections will have the most impact on your experience. So that's why we gave it more score. However, you know, TVs are obviously they're evolving through times. Manufacturers are pumping uh, many millions into developing new screen coatings and enhancing the reflection performance of their TVs. So we'll be open to recessing that as we move forward. One of the questions that we've seen the most ever since we published the test bench actually surprised me on the R&D side and uh, the testing team as well. Why did we remove the computer monitor uh, usage to our reviews? To give you the frank answer is that we believe that at this point it was doing more harm than good due to the way that we were testing TVs. We didn't really have any dedicated monitor tests being made on TVs, so we were assembling bits and pieces to give you an idea of how it would perform. One notable lapse in test was uh, text clarity, which is super important for, for monitor use, uh, which we weren't doing. So in the meantime, while we reassess and redevelop, we've decided to take it off the shelf for now so we can come up with something better in the long term. And of course, we're always listening to user feedback and demands. We also had another question that I, I'd like Sam to jump in on because his team actually tests you know, TVs and monitors. The question was, would it be possible to run TVs through the testing done for computer monitors? Yeah, and that was sort of the solution we ended up coming to because as Pascal said, looking at our PC monitor usage for TVs, it was kind of a bit of a hodgepodge of random stuff that kind of fit into how you use a TV as a monitor. But the problem with that was it didn't do a great job at actually telling you how good or bad it was to use with a computer plugged in all day. Our monitor testing, on the other hand, does a much better job of that and actually evaluates more of the important stuff. So we've already done some of the more small factor TVs as a monitor. Like we already did the C4 last year, the 42 inch version as a monitor and the 65 inch version as a TV. So our solution to this is essentially if there is a TV that you really want to see us test as a monitor, throw it in our monitor voting tool, vote for it, and we'll test it as a monitor from start to finish. And that'll do a much better job at covering the sort of aspects you want to see in terms of monitor performance for a TV. And I can't stress this enough, do reach out uh, through our forums, our Discord, uh, even email. If you want a TV tested as a monitor, do let us know. The more demand we have, the more I can justify it to the upper ups to get it done. This user asked us if we would be willing to include a follow-up to our OLED VRR flicker investigations that we did on monitors and port that over to TVs to keep the pressure going on manufacturers to solve the problem. I think it's a really good question. To give some context, when we published the uh, VR flicker test on monitors, it was the first time that some actual testing was being done on this. And that's all thanks to you. Uh, we've seen so many posts uh, through your forums, Reddit and everything to get us to do that. And we're really glad you did. As it turns out, last year in May, uh, me and some colleagues were attending Display Week, which is a very academic focused event in California for displays. And we were approached by two major players in the OLED manufacturing world that wanted to understand how we tested VR Flickr and what we were looking for exactly. So during our discussions with these manufacturers, what we noticed is that there was a disconnect between the engineering approach and the user approach. On their end, everything was was fine, it wasn't really a thing, but since they saw our testing and they saw the reaction of the community and also the scores that we'd give to it, they became aware that this was an issue. As it turns out, we're going to Display Week again this year. Uh, Sam will be there with me. And now there are lectures about uh, VR Flickr and what manufacturers are gonna be doing to mitigate it going forward. For porting it to TVs, it's something that we are looking to do. Uh, and I think Sam can give some more context on this as he's been uh, one of the forerunners of testing it on monitors. Uh, yeah, it's definitely something we're looking to bring over to our TV testing. It's not 
the next thing we're planning on doing because we do want to dive a little deeper into the underlying issues because the VR flicker comes from those changes in frame rates that change how your gamma response behaves. And we think that there might be better ways to test it than what we're already doing. And we would like to improve it first on monitors before porting it over to TVs. Absolutely. And also another part of it is we have to give time to the industry to react. Uh, to VR Flickr becoming like an issue for them, although it's been an issue for the community uh, for years. And it's one of those things that uh, if you haven't seen it yet, you're lucky. I hope you never do, because once you see it, it cannot be unseen. It really has a negative experience on your gaming performance with VR activated. Cut to our hero shot of those six monitors in the VR Flickr video. <laughs> a lot of people have been asking if we're going to be porting our new reflections test from TVs to monitors. Uh, short answer, yes. Actually, I'm doing this right now. So hopefully we'll have it out to you in about a um, well, few months. Uh, give it time for uh, our team to retest all the monitors, make sure they're all uh, well tested and the scores make sense. But yeah, we're working on it now. Yeah, we already did a little bit of a sort of teaser for this on the monitor side of things. We tested the Asus PG27 UCDM with a modified version of our ambient black level race test to sort of test the bright room contrast. And that was very popular. So we have been looking forward to porting this over to monitors. For this next question, a user asked, instead of assigning scores to every test result, why not use percentiles? Yeah, that's a really good idea and we like this idea a lot, we do have in each review, if you hover over a particular score, it will show you a chart that tells you how many products it scores better than. So it's already putting it in a percentile. It's just not changing its actual score. So instead of the score being the percentile, you can see which percentile it falls into within that scoring category. And that we think is a very useful tool because it is always good to know how good something scores relative to something else. But we do like our reviews to sort of stand on their own so you can look at a TV and get a sense for how it scores overall and not just is it better or worse than something else because not everybody necessarily cares if they're getting something better or worse than something else. They just want to know how good it is. I agree. And actually, I think it's a good time to talk about our scoring philosophy as a whole. Many of you know, and some might not, the way you know we build our scores uh, from a scale of 0 to 10. Our main audience uh, for these scores are people who are enthusiasts or have like a more of an engineering mindset who are really interested in like the technical details and like performance of products. The way you can think about it is if the score is green, so 7.5 and above, if you're picky about something and you're willing to the tech behind it, uh, you should be satisfied with your purchase. If you turn into the yellow territory, so 6 to 7.4, it might annoy you a bit, but it you know may or may not be a deal breaker depending on your personal preference. When you step into red territory, so anything 5.9 and below, in terms of raw performance uh, compared to its peers, it's not a great product. However, that doesn't mean that it's a bad product or that it won't fit your specific needs. For example, I have many family members and friends who you know, that TV that scores a 5.9 and something, that's perfectly fine to them. So it's always to take with a grain of salt and you have to consider your needs and your wants when you look at our scoring system. Yeah, and just one more thing to throw into that. If ever you disagree with the weighting we give certain things in our scores, like if you in bright room usage, all you care about is black level rays and everything else doesn't matter or matters a lot less, there is a create your own score button that you can assign your own weights to each category and have your own score and rank everything by that in our table tool. Uh, on a final note, something that we did see often pop up in uh, user comments is why can't you compare the scores between TV 2.0 and TV 1.11? Well, the simple reason is that every scoring spline has been reassessed to make sure that the scoring metrics, so the values that you need to obtain a certain score, now reflect where the TV industry is at. The scores hadn't changed for the most part for the last five to six years, and TV tech does move on like quite fast in terms of like brightness, performance, uh, specifically in other metrics. So you can't compare anything, unfortunately. However, any new TV TV tested 2.0 and above in future test benches will be comparable. Now, if it's not comparable in terms of the score, you can look at the underlying data to make your own mindset about what the TV uh, should perform like. Another reason why we can't update every single TV is that it does take over two and a half days of retesting time per TV, plus then the whole review has to be basically rewritten from scratch. Uh, so we don't really have the resources to do all the new TVs coming out this year, plus retest every TV from the last several years. Uh, so we did have to limit ourselves, but you can see on our website a list of which TVs we are planning to update 
in the near future. And some of you have asked us to test some older models. The bad news is that most TVs that are 2022 and before that we still had in stock have been put on the Accelerate Longevity Test. Now it's been running for nearly two years, uh, set to end around the summer, which you should uh, be tracking on our website. It's gonna be very interesting to see the results of this test. Most TVs uh, aren't doing so well in this test. You know, OLEDs have burn-in, LCDs have busted LEDs, they have panels that are just not functioning anymore. So unfortunately, anything that was on this test is untestable uh, at this point. So. Thank you for all the questions. We really can't provide this level of detailed work without feedback from the community. So we always appreciate it, either in the comments on our YouTube videos, our forums, our Discord channel, anywhere really. And this was our first time doing this. Let us know in the comments whether you liked it or not and if you'd like to see some more, because we're definitely open to uh, engaging more and providing more context about what we do and how we can improve. So thank you guys, have a great day. I can't start this, it's restless now. I can't throw this. <laughs> You're like Jimmy South Park. <laughs> if you break to me, I can like cut the last part. <laughs> cut two more cables shot from those six monitors in the VR <laughs> feature video. <laughs> I'm gonna keep that in. <laughs> <laughs> <He's done. laughs>